7.7 Applications of the Dot Product and Cross Product For example number one, Mrs. Merrick is pulling her daughter in a toboggan and is exerting a force of 40 newtons acting at 24 degrees to the ground. If Mrs. Merrick pulls the child a distance of 100 meters, how much work was done? What we're looking at here is we need to draw the diagram to determine what we need to uh, use in order to calculate the force. So, we have a toboggan. The toboggan is pulled by Mrs. Merrick in kind of, if you look at it, in a certain sideways but upwards direction. So, we have to create, using that red vector, we need to create the resultant vectors. A certain distance pulled sideways plus a certain distance pulled upwards in order to create that resultant vector. Let's fill in the details. A right angle. H is the uh, distance pulled sideways. V is the distance pulled upwards in a vector, sorry, vector requirement. At 24 degrees, the angle of degrees and 40 newtons is the amount of force on acting on the toboggan. So what we have to do is determine the work. So, first of all, in order to determine the work, we need to look at what horizontal distance was pulled across here. In order to determine that, we use um, the cosine uh, ratio, and we determine that 40 times cosine of 24 is equal to the magnitude of the h vector, which is equal to 36.54 newtons. So that's the force that was pulled in a horizontal direction. So this is the force acting on the object, and now we, need, you, we can use this to determine how much work was done by taking the force and multiplying it by the distance that it was being pulled. And 36.54 is the force multiplied by 100, which is the distance. And we determined that the work placed is 3,654 joules. All work is measured in joules. That's the work done by Mrs. Merrick is approximately 3,654 joules. Next question. Before we look at the next question, something we have to note. The magnitude of the cross product is equal to the area of a parallelogram. And if we remember a parallelogram, okay, and obviously provided that the vectors define the parallelogram. If we remember in a parallelogram, if we take the diagonal of a parallelogram, that is equal to a triangle. So think of a parallelogram as two of the same triangles. Uh, put against each other along one side. So example number two, determine the area of the triangle formed by the points A, B, and C. Using vectors, and we've done this type of question before, we should probably look at this question and use vectors to solve this. So, determine a vector A on B and A to C. So A to B and A to B, when you add them together, is going to be negative 1, 4, and 2. And A to C, the vectors on that, is going to be negative 5, 5, and negative 2. When we do this, we find out that A cro AB cross AC is equal to now. In order to do that, if you remember the lesson from Friday or Thursday, you will see that you have to line them up, starting with the y value, the first vector, 4, then the z value, then the x value, then the y value again for the first vector, do the same for the second vector, and then begin the cross product by starting with the top and, and doing a lattice. So 4 times negative 2, minus 2 times 5, so you get negative 8 minus 10, and then the second one, 2 times negative 5, negative 1 times negative 2, you get negative 10 minus 2, and the last one, negative 1 times 5 minus 4 times negative 5, which is going to be negative 5 plus 20, 
you find out that the result the vector the result of the cross product is negative eighteen, negative twelve, and fifteen. You then calculate the magnitude of this particular vector a cross product and you find out that the answer is equal to square root of six hundred ninety three. Now this folks is the area of a parallelogram. We need to find the area of the triangle. So to find the area of the triangle, it is half of a parallelogram. So note, taking this root 693 and taking half of it will result in the area of the triangle. Next question. Example number three. A 20 Newton force is applied at the end of a wrench that is 40 centimeters in length. The force is applied at an angle of 60 degrees to the wrench. Calculate the magnitude of the torque about the point of rotation M. If you look in the textbook, the textbook has a much more drawn out explanation, but what I'm putting here is the actual solution that I'm looking for. In the bubble again, this is something to note is the equation for torque is equal to R times F with the cross product. And the cross product is also equal to the magnitude of R, magnitude F, sine theta. Again, we're finding the magnitude. So the magnitude of R cross F is equal to magnitude of R cross F is equal to the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F sine theta. What we're doing here is when you look at all the values, you plug it in, 0 0.40 is 40 centimeters in, um, in meter form, sine of 60 degrees multiplied by the force, which is 20 newtons. When you calculate all of this, you find out that the answer to this is 6.93 joules. So again, the, magnet, the torque is also equal to joules, very similar to the force vector. All right, folks, that's the end of it. You have a very numerical day. Take care.